My name is Zerbin from URUC, and today I'm on behalf of my advisor and PI, Li Jun Liu, to present some recent work we have done on Blue Waters. Here is a, a list of group members who contributed to this work, and we also want to thank NSF and NCSA for their general funding to support us. And next, I will talk how we use Blue Waters to replicate 4D evolution of mental dynamics. First, why do we want to study the mental dynamics and why we need blue waters? First, um, at a college level uh, earth science class, we should learn that our earth has a layered structure and the largest part of the earth is earth's mental. So understanding the mental dynamics is the key to, for us to understand our earth. Uh, but the earth's mental is a complex system uh, whose dynamics requires quantification of many observations simultaneously. This observation should include both surface observation and internal observation. Traditional mental models are always focused on one observation and try to expand that uh, because of their <clears throat> In, so they always do some simplification, and the traditional models are not capable to explain uh, various geological process at one time. And with the recently, uh, recently we have uh, more and more good quality data, and some of these data are, uh, can help us to better understand, uh, better constrain our mo mental dynamics model. So we advocate to um, data-oriented numerical modeling strategy. This strategy requires uh, sophisticated numerical codes, and this kind of modeling strategy um, uses big data, and it will generate big data. So we need an efficient computational platform to do that. So uh, Blue Waters represents the best choice for us to expand the current modeling capa uh, capability uh, for the mental dynamics. So we choose to use Blue Waters to do uh, our uh, mental convention uh, models, simulations. And with Blue Waters, we extend the scalability of the community mental convention code CCOMS. Uh, the version uh, we are using is a modified version of CCOMS, and on Blue Waters, we increased the total MPI cost by tenfold. Now we can use like almost 10,000 10, costs simultaneously to do our simulation. Uh, this leads to uh, increased model resolution and a larger model domain. This is an example for a traditional mental dynamics model. Uh, people always do the simulation in a small box, and uh, it's a very simple thing, like for this one, this uh, describes the subduction process, but there's not much information in this uh, simple model, and it only can explain one, one kind of geological process and cannot uh, explain various geological processes uh, simultaneously. But in our model, we use some data-oriented numerical uh, uh, simulation method, and uh, in our model, we can have a large model domain. We can do global scale uh, convection model, and we can have a high resolution to see some detailed things about the slab and also the mental flow field. So thanks to Blue Waters to let us have the chance to do such a great uh, global convection model. Also, uh, on Blue Waters, we can resolve fine mental, uh, mental features like slabs and plumes within whole mental scale models. Slabs are just as uh, dense and cold things which is sinking in within the mantle, and the plume is just hot and buoyant uh, materials which is rising in within the mantle. For example, we did some uh, high resolution simulation work in South America. South America uh, has a long history of subduction and we are trying to use our data oriented uh, simulation to reproduce the subduction history in South America. Uh, with our high resolution model, our predicted South America slab geometry matches several crucial uh, geological and geophysical uh, observation like we can match the steep and flat uh, slab segments that uh, showed by seismic tomography, and we can match the geometry of seismicity distribution along the coastline, and we also have some fine scale features like slab tiers, and these slab, slab tiers can explain, help to explain the abnormal volcanism uh, along, the, uh, along the coast. And here is a cross-section of our model, and we can see uh, our slab geometry is very complex and it's, mu it's much more complex than the previous conceptual model I showed, and this is more realistic, and this model uh, matches the tomography very well. And also, we uh, 
based on the uh, method we developed, we also developed some realistic regional convection models for South America and North America. For South America, as I mentioned before, we have a, we have a, a well reproduced the subduction history, and we also have a well defined 3D structure of the subduction uh, sla uh, subducting slab. Here uh, on the top is the topography map of South America, and uh, below is the uh, is our isothermal surface outlined the uh, slab, and the color means different depths. Uh, in this uh, well-defined 3D structure of slab, we have some fine-scale tiers here, and we also have some very complex uh, structure with, uh, in our model. And in subduction zone, the mental flow field is uh, controlled by this uh, large piece of slab. So we also look at the mental flow field uh, beneath uh, South America. In the in the central panel, uh, this is a map view of our uh, modeled uh, mental flow field. And in seismology, there is a kind of observation called seismic anisotropy, which is a good indicator for uh, mental flow direction. Um, based on our uh, modeled mental flow field, we calculate the uh, seismic anisotropy beneath South, Amer uh, South America. When compared to the observation over the entire South America, the match between our prediction and the observation is pretty good, which means we have a constrained mental flow. Also, this model helps us to gain some uh, new insight on evolution of continent. Usually, people think that uh, a continent is very stable for hundreds of million years. But for our model, uh, we stress that the continent, the continent probably is less stable than people traditionally thought. Continental lithosphere has a layered density and uh, it could be dis uh, it, it could be destroyed by some plumes or some other things. So the, there are many things can happen beneath the continent. For North America, we are focused on the western part. Uh, we are trying to better resolve the mental upwelling below the western United States from seismic tomography. Uh, seismologists just to tell us like there are me uh, there are large uh, huge amount of hot materials beneath the. Uh, Western US, and also here is some hot material at like uh, deep in the mantle. We are trying to find which one is the heat source for the Yellowstone and uh, uh, all the volcanisms in Western US. In Western US, like the most famous uh, volcano should be the Yellowstone, and also there is like two hotspot track in the Western US, and here is a large area covered by a uh, flat basalt called Columbia River basalt. And here is a, a long-lasting debate, uh, debate about the origin of such a volcanism distribution. Uh, some people just argue that this is due to the vertically rising mantle plume, and uh, other people uh, argue that this is caused by the shallow subduction process. So we use some iterative uh, method to recover uh, the evolution of the hot material beneath Western US. And next, I will show some uh, cross section along the yellow line, and we take the uh, temperature field for pre uh, from present day. This is uh, temperature field co uh, converted from seismic tomography, and we can see here is a large pile of hot material, and here is a huge amount of hot materials beneath Western US. The deeper one is people always call it plume, and uh, it's like presumably it's the heat source of the Yellowstone. And here is the Yellowstone location. Uh, we use our iterative method to recover the evolution of all the hot material back to two, 20, uh, 20 million years ago. And we can see this uh, deep plumes just stay there for like over last 18 million years, which means that could, could not be the heat source for Yellowstone uh, super, uh, super volcano. And look at the shallow hot materials. That thing is like start from uh, Pacific, uh, on the Pacific uh, plate, and it began to intrude, uh, intrude Western US, and it's like, it is the predominant uh, heat source for the Yellowstone. So uh, from this model, we conclude that heat below Yellowstone predom uh, predominantly came from the Pacific mantle. The mantle plume plays just a minor role in generating the Western, uh, the Yellowstone uh, supervolcano. And also, this model can explain the last two, uh, 20 million years uh, volcanism in, Western, in the entire Western US. 
first 3D view. Uh, here are two isothermal uh, surfaces to outline the two piles of hot uh, material beneath Western US. And uh, the color means the depth. And we can see the plume is always staying in the deep mantle and uh, it's not connected to the surface. But the uh, hot material from Pacific Ocean, it intrudes into uh, Western US and it just reached the Yellowstone area at present day. As before, we have a well-defined mental structure. We, we want to look at the mental flow field. So we also look at the seismic anisotropy uh, in Western US. Here, here, the bars indicate, like the, the dark bars indicate the observation, and the green bars uh, indicate our prediction. There are two major trends in the Western US. One is the east trend in like uh, Snake River Plain, and also a circular pattern from the South California to East uh, Nevada. And uh, pre uh, before us, there is no model can explain this trend in the observation, but our model uh, will predict this, like this uh, East trend and the circular pattern in the Western US. So our model actually have uh, will constrain the mental flow field. Also, we look at the topography evolution in Western US. Um, we uh, investigate the last 20 million years evolution of the topography in Western US, and we also choose three localities to test our model. Uh, in this figure, like these lines are model prediction, and these uh, field shapes are the observation. Uh, the three, loca uh, the three uh, loca localities are Central Idaho, Idaho uh, Central Southern Sierra Nevada, and Central Colorado Plateau. The observation shows like in Central Idaho, uh, there is one pulse of uplift uh, during like about 12.5 million years ago, and our model also shows this in pulse, uh, this pulse of uplift. For central southern Sierra Nevada, the, uh, the geological observation shows like there are four pulses of up uplift. In our model prediction, actually we have these four pulses of uplift. In central Colorado Plateau, the geological observation shows like the topography has, um, has not been changed during last 20 million years, and uh, our prediction is like a flat line in uh, Central Cloud Plateau. So our model can really resolve this uh, pro uh, an animatic uh, topography evolution for the Western US. Also, here is some ongoing work. Uh, now we are developing a new generation of high resolution global scale sub subduction and conversion models on blue waters. This is a short video of, uh, of one of our models. Like we are looking at the West Pacific or East Asia. This model like starts from 20, 200 million years ago. We can track all the subduction and slab things, and we can see the uh, we can investigate the mental flow during the last 20 hundred million years ago. And one uh, one model like this, uh, it takes like three weeks to run with 3,000 cars on Blue Waters. So thanks to Blue Waters to let us have a chance to do such a global scale convection model. With allocation uh, assigned by uh, Blue Waters, we have published like almost 20 papers, including some top journal like Science, Nature Geoscience. So uh, thanks to Blue Waters to help us to expand our knowledge about plate tectonics. Also, we have some broad social uh, exposure. We have several, oh, we had several uh, social intervie uh, inter interviews and we also got some uh, news exposure like this one. Thank you.